Hello. You have reached a stick and poke YouTube vlog. About a year ago, I decided to start my own leg sleeve. I've got a bunch of images on there that represent the last year and a half, or things that I really like, like a plague rat or a star of chaos. Today we're doing part two of my ninth project, which is a cicada. It's from the Avatar music video Going Hunting, which came out a month or so ago as of time of recording. We did a little bit of an experiment with textured needles on the first round, but we'll come back to that. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, I have a little bit of a side tangent. I want to show you something really quick. Hi. Look at my hair. <laughs> Something happened to my head. Don't worry about it. I like it. That's all that matters. I think it looks cool. I'm a mermaid. Look at, look at the bottom side. Look at this. It's ridiculous. I wish it could stay this way. I really do. Uh, yep. Uh, some, something bleachy happened to my head, but we'll fix it by the end of the video. Don't, don't worry your pretty little head about it. It's gonna be fine. Um, I think it looks really neat. So back to the main topic of this video. I really like to emphasize sanitation because I know the majority of my viewers are people who are considering doing this themselves, who have already started doing stick and poke themselves. And that's really important, especially if you're gonna be vlogging stuff too, you know, be a really good example for everybody else. So all I'm doing here is rubbing everything down with alcohol, every surface twice, and anything I might touch gets rubbed <laughs> down. So, <laughs> rubbed down. Stuff. Hang on, I gotta take my pants off. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me one second. Excuse me, I'll be over here. Ta-da! You gotta come down here. Alright, over narrator again. So, I'm telling you a lot of information, thus the hand gesturing, but I'm honestly getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to tell you about the textured needles that we experimented the first time and how this time we're going to be using similar ones. So I'll clarify in a minute. We sat down and we used the same size needles, but not textured to touch it up. And it's great. It's great. Uh, it's only been healing four or five days. Me. Ugh. Me. Most of your boxes are going to be liners, probably. And you might have shaders, maybe. That just means the needles are like this, or they're, they're like this. Or maybe it means that the needles are like this, or they're like this. I don't know. Ooh, that's not cringe at all. Uh, it wasn't till playing back that footage that I recognized that I don't quite know what I'm talking about. So I sat down and I did some research to figure out the actual difference, especially between how liner needles and shader needles might affect a stick and poke. So if you already know how to read a tattoo needle, feel free to skip ahead. But just in case you're brand new to tattooing and you're completely overwhelmed with the labels on tattoo needles like I was, I'd just like to do a really quick educational segment on how to read your tattoo needles. So that first line of text is what's gonna tell you about the size and the shape of your tattoo needles. But first of all, the most important thing is gonna be that second line, the expiration date. You know you shouldn't be using anything that's expired, but the thing with tattoo needles that you may not know is they come in a little blister pack and that blister pack is filled with EO gas, which is meant to keep them sterile after they've been autoclaved at the factory and whatnot. So even though it might seem like nothing has ever touched your needles inside its blister pack, that expiration date represents when the gas might have leaked out, and they're not 100% sanitary. This is technically a medical item. You're inserting it into someone's skin. So if you have expired needles, those are only for practice skin now. Sorry, go steal some oranges from your neighbor's tree or something and practice on that instead. 
I'd also like to let you know that there are some inconsistencies across brands of tattoo needles. So there might be a little bit of variation, but I'm gonna try to make sure that everything I tell you today is consistent across the line. Sometimes there'll be an extra letter that represents the brand. Sometimes they'll use an asterisk instead of a slash. And then the last thing I'd like to let you know, always check the soldering and the tips of your needles after you've opened them. You never know, there might be a bent tip on one of your needles and you don't wanna hurt the person who's sitting for you. So look real, real close, even if you've checked the expiration date. All right, now onto the primary bit of information that's gonna be on your tattoo needle blister pack. That main line is gonna be broken down into every two numbers or letters. The first two numbers are gonna represent the gauge or the diameter of your needles. All you really need to look for is something that says 10 or 12. Those are the standard size for most tattoo needles. Anything that says 06 or 08 is gonna be considered a bug pin. These are ideal for machines because they have a slightly slower flow of ink. I'm not saying stick and poke artists can't use them, but if you're new to this, it might make things a little bit more difficult. And to be honest, in the past, I have misused this term. I've seen a B somewhere in the needle name and it's made me assume that it was a bug pin, but tattoo needles are kind of confusing. So that's all you really need to look for, something that probably says 12 for that first number. Your second pair of numbers is gonna be your needle count. That's the grouping of your needles. Something that says five, seven, or nine is gonna be ideal for line work. You can play around with other sizes in the future. The number does affect the orientation, but it's on a pretty tiny scale and you're gonna be stacking up these pokes anyways, so not something you have to worry about too much. But if you're new to this, aim for something like a seven or a nine. That's gonna carry enough ink for you and still be a relatively fine line. You don't need itty bitty lines. These are tattoos, you want them to be visible. So that would be my suggestion for your needle count number. And then in the fifth and sixth positions in this weird little alien code is gonna be the configuration of your needles. The first letter is going to tell you the shape. I could go into a lot of detail about that, but because we're talking about lines, we're just gonna go with R for round. There are lots of other resources out there if you wanna learn about other configurations of needles, but this is what's gonna be most useful for most stick and poke artists. Now the second one is gonna be where we're clarifying the previous information I told you when you saw my face and I was talking at you. L stands for liner, S stands for shader. That sounds like you want L's, that you want liners all the time, but I was actually quite confused about what the configuration of liners and shaders means. So liners are in fact tapered inward, whereas shaders are parallel. Therefore, a shader line, if they are both, let's say seven needles, will be slightly thicker than the liner needle. But the shader needle is going to hold a little bit more ink in it. Now, why is it called a shader versus a liner then? That's actually more of an indicator for people who use machines. You might have been in a tattoo parlor and seen that most tattooists have a liner machine and a shader machine. I always assumed that was just so that one was clean like one had the dark black in it and one had the shades. But what it actually is, is most shader machines are a couple ounces heavier. So the shader needle is made so that a tattooist can move their hand a little bit quicker, do some whip stitches or something like that. That's a lot of extra information for you. What you need to know though, is you don't have to worry about the difference between lighter liners and shaders. In fact, I might suggest you using shaders to do some of your lines because as stated, it will carry a little bit more ink for you. So it means less in the stick and poke world, whether it's a line or a shader, but this is some accurate information. I saw a lot of different resources online that confused me. And it wasn't until I found a cosmetology tattooist who did permanent eyeliner and eyebrows, who was able to accurately clarify what was going on with liners versus shaders, as well as the wild card of today's episode, which is this terrible T. Sometimes it will be an asterisk T. Sometimes it will be a dash T. I highlight it in red because in my personal opinion, after one single experiment, no, no T. You don't need the T. T stands for textured needles. And I previously had a misconception that this was a specialty product that they went in and they added more texture and it would carry more ink. But unfortunately, from what I have found, it only does more damage. It does not necessarily make your stick and poke process any easier and it massively slows down the healing time. 
So it was that cosmetology page that I got this visual resource from. Uh, but basically when you manufacture tattoo needles, they're kind of textured as it is, and then they're polished afterwards to make them smoother. So textured needles are just kind of sold minus a, a step in the manufacturing process. As you can see, they look really rough. I don't think you need to be using them. Moving on. Hey, thank you for listening to that last segment. I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day to learn something new. I know that's a little bit dry. Now we're going to get to the fun part, where you get to watch someone poke themselves in the leg a whole bunch. <laughs> so, as stated, the cicada is today's project. Today we are using the same numbered needles as we did previously, but minus the texturing, or what is more accurate as we now know, polished needles. But first... I must show you the sanitation ritual once again. Every single time I sit down to poke, I clean all my surfaces. Everything is getting wiped down with, I believe I'm currently using 70% alcohol. You know, 99 is probably better, but this is why I wipe twice. Everything gets wrapped in saran wrap. I know I already told you this, but it's super, super important. I'll put towels down on my chairs. I wrap absolutely any surface, even the stuff that I'm like resting my feet on. Look at this. I tend to get distracted, but you know, life is short, so... It says, fun, festive. <laughs> okay. Fun and festive. Yeah, so that saran wrap might be older than me. I, uh, I happen to live in my grandparents' house, and um, I found that. Uh, I have a lifetime supply of saran wrap from my grandmother purchasing stuff at sales. And God knows when this confetti saran wrap was manufactured, but it still works. Look at this freaking saran wrap, it's redonkulous. Festive. I mean, it's the little things in life, right? So once again, wiping everything down, I use a little tattoo needle holder grip and since I reuse that I absolutely soak it every single time that I use it once or twice and scrub at it really good. I'm almost paranoid with sanitation but again you guys we're poking our skin you need to be sanitary so that's the biggest investment in this you might be saving a few hundred dollars a thousand dollars on a machine but you should probably invest in proper gloves clean materials that are only going to be used for this, like my Vaseline container is only for tattooing, stuff like that. Now here's going to be my setup section. Some of my other videos you can see a little bit more extensive of how I do this uh, a little bit closer up, but just giving you an example of what I do when I set up. Try to wear gloves throughout your entire setup process. That might be one thing that if I wanted to be a slightly better example for you I would do. Make sure I was wearing gloves while I was cleaning my surface but I always make sure to wear gloves when I'm putting the needles together. Also, shake your ink. That's a mistake I made early on. I didn't realize, like, you really gotta, you gotta shake that ink. Shake it up real good, and then let it sit for a couple minutes to let all the bubbles out. Try to always use a clean paper towel to open and close your inks mostly because it'll absorb any ink in that cap and keep it from getting all over your gloves. Another issue I have is with dried ink inside that cap spilling all over my counter. That's a mistake that is visible in a couple of my videos and I'm not fond of that happening. Emphasis on me not being a professional. I am a self-taught tattooist. Uh, always sanitize your surface that you're gonna be working on. There have been times in the past that I've forgotten that step as well, and uh, sometimes I've put a stencil down before I even sanitized. So there's lots of small steps you need to keep into consideration. I also have a habit of cleaning my gloves before I start, just in case I touched a surface I did not use. That might be a little excessive, you maybe don't need to do that, but I'll spray some of my green stuff on my gloves and dry them off before I start touching my actual skin. In the past, I've mostly showed my audience time-lapse videos. So for this one, I'm going to show you a little bit of the speed at which I poke. I think professional tattooists are a little bit faster. They're a little more confident in their pokes, and they can get a lot more done. 
but this is the rate at which I go. My very first sitting was three and a half hours with that textured needle. So this entire tattoo at this point is one single pass. All I was doing was basically absorbing. Hello, morning alarm. It's time for me to get out of bed. I am awake, I promise, phone. Pardon me. I am a professional YouTuber, and I have sounds on on my phone while I am recording. Anywho, this is how I have started cleaning needles. Another big mistake I made early on was having a cup of water that I was swishing my needle in. That might work if you have a machine, but something was going wrong, and I think I might have been getting too much water or cleaning fluid in my ink cup, and it was sitting on top of the ink, because I feel as though my first couple three inches of line are always very, very solid, and then the ink has a harder time taking. I've done some experiments in the past where I replace the needles as I go, so I go through multiple needles in one sitting, and that did not fix the problem. So what I'm doing at some point is not, contamination's not the right word, but there's an extra fluid or something on top of my ink. What I might suggest to you is replacing your ink a couple times throughout the process, or just be wary of how much either tattoo balm or green soap ends up on your needle before you dip it again. So this is the rate or the speed at which I poke my lines. I try to be as precise as possible. I'm spending a lot of my focus on stretching in at least three directions. I'm using the fleshy part of my right hand to pull away in that other direction. You can see I'm gripping with the thumb and index finger of my left hand. But the stretch is actually what's going to get you your cleanest lines. That's one of the most important things. All right, now I'm gonna switch back over to time lapse because we don't need this video to be two hours long. Half an hour is plenty. That's about as much of my voice as you need, I promise. I've had a lot of really cool comments from people. Uh, for example, someone in my last video pointed out that I was shaving uh, the surface area from down to up. And I believe I complained in that video about getting razor burn because I have sensitive skin. And someone pointed out to me that you really should be shaving the opposite direction. I think as like a female bodied person, I grew up wanting my legs to feel smooth and so I got in that habit but it's actually all you're really doing is trying to get the hair out of the way so it never tugs your needle it's also cleaner and stuff without it out of the way so always shave with the direction of the hair growth you don't need it to be perfectly clean again just want hair out of the way another comment I got recently was from username ha ha hi hi Thank you for your comment and for having such a cute screen name. They had asked me about the depth of the needles. Uh, they had read somewhere that you want to do about one and a half to two millimeters of depth within the skin and that they're using a bit of fake skin that's just over a millimeter thick. So it was a little bit confusing for them. The thing is, you really, in my opinion, you don't understand the depth of skin until you start doing it, which is why I started on myself. Skin varies in thickness throughout various parts of your body, and that's the major thing that fake skin is lacking. Fake skin is perfect for preserving your pack practice and for giving you, you know, as good of a feel to poking as you can, but there's absolutely no indicator of layers. You can't feel the difference. And I've mentioned this maybe 10 videos ago, but the reason I decided that my very first tattoo was going to be stick and poke is because that is what I wanted to learn. I didn't want to do blowouts. I wanted to be able to hear what was going on in my skin. So I sat down and I did a very small tattoo on my inner ankle and I listened to the sound of it. They're very tiny, like that you can hear that will sort of indicate to your little reptilian brain that you're doing this correctly. So when you do your very first tattoo on your skin, I highly suggest, even though you wanna to listen to something like music or a movie, give your ears time to learn what this sounds like. That's gonna be the first indicator about what is the correct depth for you. After that, you'll get a feel for sort of the tension in the skin. I wish I could give you a more specific answer about the how deep into the skin you want to go. But even from tattooing myself, to going to another friend, like a friend who's a little bit older than me, um, their skin's a lot different than mine. And this is just a massive, a massive learning curve that you figure out as you go how deep the skin is. I can't say for sure 
that I've never had a blowout, that I've never gone too deep into the skin and had the ink sort of flood. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's a little bit easier to not blow out with stick and poke though. But again, I am an amateur and that's my opinion on how to know the depth that you should poke at. It is something that you learn in the process. But I super appreciate your question. You also asked about the angle. I believe you asked, uh, do you want to be about 45 degrees to 60 degrees? I'm clearly poking at a much more extreme angle. That's going to give me longer pokes underneath the skin. 45 degrees is probably fine. And now it's the next morning. I always like to wake up first thing in the morning and go outside. And some days I have this little lady with me. Uh, she's got a lot of energy. If you've watched any of my older videos, I started out this series. Oh, oh, high emotion in my heart. No, shh, stay down. No sadness. I started out this series with a cat. Her name was Mooney, and I miss her to death. This dog is Soju. She is amazing. She's not my dog, though. Well, look at her being so cute. She's too cute. I can't stand it. Um, Soju's not my puppy, but I spend a lot of time with her dad. So she gets to come hang out in my backyard because her dad doesn't have a nice backyard like I do. She loves my backyard. So she was hanging out with me this day and she will be my support, emotional support corgi throughout this series, probably. We'll see what happens. But um, that's, that's who that pupper was in case you were wondering. You might've heard them borking in the background previously. So this is the next day. I am nowhere near as inflamed as I was after the first sitting. Those textured needles really did a number on my skin. And I had to take about six weeks afterwards to heal. Whereas this, within a few days, felt perfect. I wasn't miserably itchy or anything like that. It does not look like we made a huge amount of progress. It looks like I only blacked in the arms and the head a little bit. But we did solidify the lines a lot. Now, there are two options you have when you're a stick and poke artist. You can work really, really hard to make those lines nice and sharp and make it look like a real tattoo. Or you can kind of embrace the fact that this is a stick and poke tattoo and allow those little pokes to show through. That's sort of up to you. And if you want your lines to be sharper, you do have to keep in mind that you need a much simpler design. Pardon me while I talk over myself. You are a brat. <laughs> I keep noticing the camera, though. Hey, Soj. Come here. Come get this. <laughs> That's how I get you in the shot. I'm not gonna throw it, though. <laughs> you leap like a little bunny rabbit. Come here. Come here. Yeah. So here you can see the leg sleeve all together so far. This is a pretty good example of where I can reach and where I can't. There's a little bit of gap right underneath the cicada right there. My leg sort of creases there whenever I'm poking. So lots of these gaps might wait until, knock on wood, the future when I might have a machine. Or uh, when I can poke a little bit faster. Because one of the hardest parts of doing stick and poke is holding these bizarre yoga poses until your leg goes asleep. That's been the number one thing that slows me down is having to stop because I'm in ridiculous pain and filled with pins and needles. But let's not think about pins and needles. Let's think about how cute this little dog is. Soju, the adventure dog. Destroyer of sticks. Redistributor of rubber duckies. Lover of balls. Wait, wait a minute. Hang on, I take that one back. Just the first two. All right, now we're blonde. We are blonde. Which just, with, I was blonde for a week. Like I said, we fix it by the end of the video. You want to get, make your bets now. <laughs> Leave a comment. What color do you think my hair is going to be at the end of this video? Um, the, f the first bit I showed you, we had bleached out my dark blue hair. And it turned like, like mermaid emerald green. And then this was a second bleaching. Uh, and it was, it was mostly blonde and then minty on the bottom. It was the prettiest hair I've ever had. I don't love being a blonde. Blondes do not have more fun, in my opinion. Um, but it sure was interesting. 
And again, that was the sanitation. And this is the setup. We've already gone over that, but I choose to show it to you. If this seems redundant, you're learning. That's what you're here for, okay? This is a learning process. We're in this together. And you better be taking notes because there's going to be a quiz at the end of the lesson, okay? Here we go. Setting everything up with gloves on. Made sure to shake those inks real good. Opening them up with a paper towel so you avoid making a mess. Messes will happen, but you know, get good habits early on. Clean your work surface as well as your poke surface. I have little alcohol wipes for uh, when I'm already in the zone and ready to go. You can just pop one of those open and wipe down anything. The best part about a second sitting is it's very stressful dealing with the stencil. And you always have a moment of panic of like, is this right? Is this, is, is this straight? Am I gonna, am I gonna put something on raw? I'm, look, look, I'm gonna shave right, look, yay. Thank you to the YouTuber or the person on YouTube who told me to correct the way I shaved because the healing process has actually been a lot more pleasant since I started doing this. Um, I have incredibly sensitive skin. So very useful, shave downwards. Uh, making sure everything's very clean, cleaning off all those little hairs that I just shaved because nobody wants that. Uh, and I switched my gloves around. Gloves aren't that expensive, so it doesn't hurt to have more with you. And here we go. It is the third day. Again, we did about three and a half hour sittings each time. So we had the textured needles about two months ago. And then about two weeks ago, we did one round of three and a half hours. I let it heal for about a week. And then we came back in and we solidified those lines a little bit more and put a little bit more black in the center of the cicada body. I used many, many different needles this time um, because we're doing a little bit of needle education. I decided to try out a 14 round shader. And because I am poking at such an extreme angle, the number 14, which indicates the number of needles on the bundle was a little bit excessive. I don't feel like I was using all those needles and it might have given me um, a slightly different texture, which I'm totally okay with. I am not an expert on what stick and poke textures are gonna look like at this point. That'll be a future video. So far, we're just being healthy and happy with what we're doing. All right, what did you guess? If you guessed red, then you win a banana sticker. Congratulations to you. If you knew who I was over a year ago, then you're not surprised. So Soju's dad actually helped me out with this. Uh, if you've ever had your hair done, you know that it's very expensive. And if I was going to take this freaking mane into a salon and ask them to bleach it out and make it the literal opposite color of what it was before, that would have cost, like, a grand easily. So, praise be to Soju's dad. Excuse you. My lady. That little lady truly has some opinions about cameras. I don't know what she's got against them, but I don't know. She's very concerned about preserving her soul. Do we match? No, we don't match. If I let it wash out a little bit, maybe we will. Look at your little face. Look at you. Okay, don't. It's fine. Yep, so I had to change my fun quarantine hair color to a quote-unquote natural hair color. Um, red's not actually my favorite hair color, but I pull it off pretty decently. And um, it's technically a natural hair color, so it's the only weird hair color I can wear to jobs. Time to unwrap. This is my go-to method for preserving after the first day of tattooing. 
R.I.P. green mermaid hair that I loved. But I start a job tomorrow and I have to look like a normal you. Oh. Oh, that's the... I can deal with the hair color change, but... Do you know what time it is, boys and girls? Oh, it's the saddest. It's the saddest time. It's the sad, saddest time of year. Where you pick your nose and film it and put it on YouTube and no one really cares. Oh, here we go. And I hate taking this in and out, so um, depending on what my schedule looks like, that's going to be my face from here on out. Oh, and I got to take, I got extra earrings, I got to take some of them out too. The things we do for health insurance. Anyway, so my hair's red now. Here's the tattoo the next day. This is after 11 hours of poking all together. We had poked just about the entire outline, a lot of the red, and put a lot more black shading into the cicada body. There is more work to go. We've got to do a black outline around the outside of the wings and probably solidify in the black a little bit more, as well as the inside of the eye makeup. But I'm feeling great. I do think I'm going to leave a little bit of, of texture in the center. Ooh, let me make sure I'm in frame. A little bit of texture in here, but as you can see there's a little bit of shadow I put underneath here. We need to fill that in to the edge of this red. And then also the outline here is going to be blackened in. So we spent about half of the time of the last sitting fixing lines. That's why it doesn't look like there's as much project. Pro oh, oh, oh. Progress. 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 Oh my god, that dog is playing fetch by herself. Hang on. She's so cute, I cannot stand it. Nope. Alright. Oh, gotta wait for the trash truck to go by. I have awesome timing. Yep. Thanks, gentlemen. Almost. Almost. Are we in the clear yet? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. You have reached the end of this stick and poke vlog. I just wanted to say I appreciate you for watching this. If you are an amateur stick and poke person yourself, awesome for you to be doing your research for checking out what other people have done before you. Thank you for being safe. If you're not and you're just watching these videos for fun, thank you for checking out small independent YouTubers. It actually means a ton to us. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for sticking it out to the end. This is going to be my very last video for 2021. So happy new year's to you. And I hope to see you all in January. Please be safe and yeah, happy poking.